constellation. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on guys? So on July 23rd, one of the most significant fights of the year will be taking place. And that's Terrence Crawford versus Victor Postal. And the photos you guys are looking at, those are provided by my man, Mikey Williams. Shout out to Mikey Williams. Go ahead and follow him on Instagram at 4MikeyWilliams. That's the number 4 Mikey Williams on Instagram. This is one of the best fights that could be made with the high expectations of Terrence Crawford possibly becoming the next pound for pound king. And when I say pound for pound king, I'm not just talking about a fighter that some people say is pound for pound the best fight in the world. I'm talking about a fighter that is universally recognized as pound for pound the best fight in the world, like Floyd Mayweather was, where there is no debating or disputing it. This is the expectations of what Terrence Crawford can possibly become. So you put him in the ring with another undefeated champion that just knocked out the machine, Lucas Matisse, and you have a very significant fight in the junior welterweight division. I find it ironic as always, it's always the fighters on a coincidental list that end up fighting the guy that the decaf said he wouldn't fight or he was afraid to fight. This year already, we have already signed Deontay Wilder's fighting against Povetkin in Russia. We have Terrence Crawford fighting Victor Postal in July. And we have Andre Ward fighting against Sergey Kovalev in November. We all know, of course, Canelo versus Golovkin would be a huge fight for the year. We'll get to see Canelo for the first time fight against a guy almost naturally bigger than him, just like Amir Khan did when he was fighting Canelo, or just like Floyd Mayweather did when he was fighting Canelo, right? We still haven't seen that with Golovkin, but at least if that fight takes place, we'll get to see how Canelo deals with that type of adversity. Now, because Canelo's trainer told me that Canelo is not going to fight at middleweight for maybe another three or four fights, that leads me to believe that Canelo ain't going to fight Golovkin. I hope I'm wrong, but if, once again, if we're listening to Canelo's own trainer, it's highly unlikely. So back to this fight, you know, Victor Postal and Terrence Crawford, this is a really good matchup. With Victor Postal being tall and really long, he's a boxer, counter puncher. I mean, those attributes alone already presents problems for the average fighter. But we all know Terrence Crawford, he ain't the average fighter. I believe this fight is gonna look a lot like Terrence Crawford versus Ricky Burns. The only difference is Victor Postal, he'll tie you up a lot quicker than Ricky Burns did. You know, I believe that we're going to see a very aggressive Terrence Crawford after probably the first three or four rounds. You know, the difference from the Postal versus Matisse fight versus the Postal versus Crawford fight is in the Matisse fight, because Matisse was a little bit more predictable, Postal was able to get off punches before he would tie up and hold. I believe eventually, you know, because of Crawford's athleticism, it's going to get to the point where Postal is going to have to pull a Vladimir Klitschko and he's going to have to grab sometimes before he can even get punches off because of the creativity of Terrence Crawford. Now, don't get me wrong. Once again, this is going to be a very tough fight for Terrence Crawford and this is why it's a great fight because, because we get to see how Terrence Crawford is going to find a way to work on the inside and get close to Victor Postal and cut the distance without getting tied up before Terrence Crawford can even get off. So it'll be very interesting. Very interesting chess match. You know, because Terrence Crawford is so slick, he's so intelligent, he finds ways to land the bombs. And if he can knock out someone like Victor Postal, I mean, let alone, you know, if he could just dominate him, it'll be impressive. But of course, if he can knock him out, that just puts a little cherry on top of the Sunday, basically. 
So, you know, we'll see what happens. July 23rd is going down. You know, the only thing that's unfortunate about this fight is I don't believe this is pay-per-view worthy, you know, but that's not Terrence Crawford's fault or Bob Arum's fault, you know, according to what Bob Arum just recently said, because Bob Arum, he did say that he actually wanted to make this fight a non-pay-per-view fight on HBO, which of course makes all the sense in the world. This would have been a big fight on HBO, but I'm hearing because of the HBO pay cuts, they wanted to put this on pay-per-view against uh, Bob Arum's wishes, which is a whole nother conversation when it comes to HBO and the pay cuts. Because if you guys think about it, of course, when HBO is doing pay cuts, when Oscar De La Hoya or, or Bob Arum, when they're paying their fighters a lot less than Al Heyman, and we're not getting an enormous amount of great matchups from Top Rank or Golden Boy, you see no articles of Top Rank or Golden Boy, you know, being a sinking ship and this is the beginning of the end and they're going broke. You don't hear that, right? You don't hear that when it comes to HBO, when it comes to Top Rank, when it comes to Golden Boy. But when it comes to Al Heyman, we're seeing articles by decafs and fans posting comments saying that Al Heyman is going broke and aha, I can't wait for him to be out of the sport, etc., etc., etc. But we know what time it is, as always. Al Heyman is paying his fighters almost double the amount that Golden Boy and Top Rank are paying their fighters right now. And I'm not even going to sit over here and speculate and, and talk like a decaf and tell you it's because Bob and, and Golden Boy, they're going broke. I'm not going to tell you that. Because the bottom line is, Bob Arum, he's been doing this shit for what, 50, 60 years? Which is proof to me that anyone can do, that can do this for 50 to 60 years, it's obvious that Bob Arum has had his ups and downs where maybe he wasn't making the money he wanted to make one year and then he did better the next year. So it's ridiculous to speculate that someone who comes onto the scene and they're successful right right out the gate and you automatically assume that this person is going to just go broke when everything is going good for them and they continue to hire and elicit as many boxers as possible. And there are no fighters that are unhappy under the Al Heyman banner. In fact, you have fighters actually leaving top rank just to sign with Al Heyman and Golden Boy, by the way. All right. So with that all being said, I look forward to this fight. Once again, Terrence Crawford versus Victor Postal, July 23rd on pay-per-view. That's all I got, guys. I'm on to the next one.